Newcastle Fans TV. Hello everybody, absolutely wonderful, glorious weather. This is actually probably the coolest it's been all day and it's about 26 now, 27, so you might be seeing me come in and out of the shade. This is the last word. Yeah, we're doing it with the friendlies. Obviously you might have seen me match reaction a little bit earlier. I've also done one for the under 23s over on NFTV Extra because we all know that the game uh, was switched. What I mean by that, we knew that Carl Darlo has tested positive for COVID and that also meant that Freddie Woodman and Mark Gillespie had to self-isolate. So we were left with no goalkeepers, with Martin Dubravka also injured. So it was time for the giant, Mr. Dan Langley, to step forward, six foot seven, getting his debut in goal, which was absolutely wonderful to see. And that also meant that the club weren't going to mix any of the under-23s in with the first team. So they sent a different squad across the road here. I say across the road, it's a couple of miles away, at Harrogate. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the game now. Let's have a look at the lineup. So, uh, what was interesting that Bruce went with a wing back system, as you can see on your screen. I'm going to put the starting lineup, then I'll also put up a lineup how we ended the game as well. So, it was Dan Langley getting his first ever chance in a, in a, I was going to say a black and white shirt, but it wasn't. It was one of them horrible pink shirts. Murphy was at right wing back, and then you had Matt Ritchie at left wing back. Fantastic. I see Callum Watts play alongside Fernandez and the captain Jamal Sells, and then you had the two sitting which were he which were Hendrick and Hayden Fraser given that license to try and get forward and then Joe Layton kind of tucking in from the left helping up top with Wilson so that was the lineup um wing backs is that the way going forward in the season there's a question I'm going to ask already um at the end but as a game we kicked off red hot temperatures as I say I'm sweating here and that's uh, like an hour and a half after the game but um, Joe Linton went down after 18 minutes. Uh, the right decision, if anybody gets an injury, just get them off. You don't want to make it any worse. So we'll have to see how Joe Linton's injury is. It doesn't look too serious the way he walked off the pitch. But whatever you think of Joe Linton, look, it's an injury which he didn't want to any of your players. So he was replaced by Dwight Gill. And then Newcastle's first chance came just two minutes later where Gill played through Ryan Fraser. Goalkeeper's way off his line. Fraser lobs it over the top and it just goes wide. And then just two minutes later, York's best chance came because Matt Ritchie was asleep. Their right winger is in on goal. It's a fantastic hit. Great save by Dan Langley. Stretched himself to turn it around. That would have done him the world of good saving that. Uh, and then on the half hour mark, Murphy gets on the end of Richie's cross from the left. The goalkeeper quite easily saves it. He's near post. And then Newcastle on the counter attack on the 41st minute, breaking through. It's Callum Wilson. He plays in Jeff Hendrick, who probably should be doing a lot better, but he puts it on target. That's all he can ask. And the goalkeeper saves it. And then the, it was half time. Newcastle were having a, they ended the um, for me ended the first half a lot better side. A couple of changes were made at half time. Alan St. Maximum come on for Callum Wilson, and then we also seen Jamal Lewis come on for the captain Jamal Lascelles. So the two Jamals replaced each other, and that meant that Isaac Hayden dropped to centre back, moved moved Richie up into midfield, and then Newcastle kicked off. And we didn't really have a chance for about about 20 minutes and just before the hour mark went and again a couple of changes the Longstaff brothers Matty and Sean came on for Fraser and Hendrick and then the chances started came the 65th minute ESM on the right uh, lovely piss taken as he normally does you know what he's like crosses it in whips it in it's actually nearly an own goal defender nearly scores an own goal goalkeeper tips it over the bar five minutes later Richie's corner from the right almost a goal for Dwight Gale little flick on just goes wide two minutes later Gale pulls it from back from the right. There's Richie with his right foot, but it's straight the goalkeeper who tips over. So there's a lot of chances coming for Newcastle at this stage. They just weren't clinical enough. Three minutes later, on 75 minutes, ESM and Gale play 1-2. ESM blasts it, but it's great challenge. Blocked and it goes over for the bar. And then just literally a minute later, Sean Longstaff hits the side netting. Uh, and then we've seen uh, Paul Dummer come on the 68th minute. We've seen Yoshino Yamutu replacing Dwight Gale on the 78th minute. So that were all the subs done. Uh, this is the lineup how Newcastle ended the game. Look, it's not going to be the side that starts first game of the season. Of course, it's not. A lot of those players there, in particular, Mutu probably doesn't have a look in, but in will the two Longstaff start the first game of the season? No, but that's how Newcastle ended uh, the lineup uh, towards the end of the game at York. Um, so going on the last few minutes, Barrow shot, had a massive shot deflection, which wrong foot Dan Langley just went for a corner and uh, from the corner they scored which is really disappointing to be honest with you Duckworth brilliant long range header beats Langley can't really question the goalkeeper it's a fantastic header if you're going to be nitty picking stop that header stop it 
But it's a great header, York score, Newcastle. We really only had a half chance towards the end with uh, Callum Watts. 90 minutes header, but Newcastle went down to a defeat, which was really, really disappointing. Although, win, lose, a draw. Pre-season friendlies is not about that, but if you keep losing games, because obviously Doncaster next Friday, uh, which will bring you access to here on NFTV, if we lose that, will that knock the confidence? You lose the next one. So although it's not important, match fitness is more important today, especially with these conditions. I do have a few questions from today, and some of these may get answered in the next coming weeks. So my first one is, uh, a lot of people were asking, how did Dan Langley and Kellen Watts do? Big, big fan of Kellen Watts. Everybody knows that. I would like to keep him at this... At this in the squad this season whatever happens I know we've got too many centre-backs we've got seven in total I would like to say Callum Watts kept the wrong am amongst the first team may play, maybe play a cup games did nothing wrong he played on the left of the three he was moved to central later on didn't do anything wrong comfortable on the ball Dan Langley how did he do fantastic save in the first half as I mentioned can it do anything about the goal a couple of um scary moments maybe for crosses because considering his height he's massive but apart from that i think he was all right um i've always said and anybody who watches nftv extra i always say he's the best goalkeeper in the under 23s he's a giant left footed he should be number one or put out on loan for the season for me where was um flowing lejeune where was he today obviously i haven't seen bruce's press match conferences or interviews yet however Flown Lejeune wasn't involved at all, whether that's a nick or there's transfer bid come in, I don't know yet. We'll probably find that out in the next few days as well. The COVID situation needs looked at because you think about the goalkeepers being missing because of self-isolating Darlow. Will anybody else get affected later on the week? Someone else could test positive. That needs, that needs to be monitored because that could easily get out of hand and you could have several players self-isolating, which will make Newcastle's uh, squad depleted for next Friday. Uh, only five players played the full 90. Dan Langley, Jacob Murphy, Kellen Watts, Matt Ritchie and Isaac Hayden all playing the full 90. Doesn't surprise me, Hayden does. He was also moved back later on at centre-back uh, when the substitutions were brought in uh, towards uh, half-time. Joe Litton's injury, as I say earlier on, is that serious enough? Whatever you think of Joe Litton, as I say, he's going to be playing first-team games. That'll be monitored. A lot of possession in the game. No killer instinct, although Wilson only played 45 minutes. Done a video the other day where I got the other half to voice over some strikers that Newcastle could look at outside the big five. We need another, we need another striker. Dwight Gale's not the man. He's an all right replacement here and there. But for the full season, both of them, Gale and Wilson, are too injury prone for me. We need another striker in. Joe Litton's not the answer. So we have to get clinical in that final third because if we lose Wilson, we're fucked. We are proper fucked for scoring goals. Mentioned the conditions already. It's very hot here, 27 degrees. Currently, it was a little bit warmer earlier. That doesn't help either sets of players. No excuses, but it didn't help. It would have been a bit, cl a bit cl clammy. Is wing-backs the way to go forward in the season? We played five at the back today. Is that what we're heading into the season? Do you just want to say that? Do you just want to change it? Of course, we've got a lot of players to come back with the lads from the Euros, Miguel Almiron to come back as well. So the squad is still missing a few players that will come back very shortly, probably after the Doncaster game. And I wanted to touch upon Joe Willock, finally. He played 28 minutes for Arsenal yesterday. Where are we at with that? Is that, is that progressing anywhere? Is it a no-go? Um, it's kind of Arteta's not really answering the question properly. And I, I feel in Newcastle have got to go and test the water a little bit for me. Get him back if you can, push it. If not, look elsewhere. Go and target somewhere else. You've got to start getting players in the, the first game of the season. It's only four weeks away. You've got to start getting players in pretty quickly as well. Any others coming in? Any other transfers? Any going out? Lejeune was missing today. What's happening with him? Are we going to get rid of Yoshinu Mutu? I talked about the strikers earlier. There is loads and loads of questions to come from today that I've picked up just on my own. I'm sure you lot have got loads. I want to know what you think in the comments below. We've got BI, but about the topics at the end that I touch upon. Go over and have a look at the match reaction that I did earlier. Have a look at NFTV Extra. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye.